everyone, JJ here with The Out of Value. Welcome. Well, today we're going to look at a young Canadian billionaire, investor and entrepreneur, Andrew Wilkinson. He co-founded a company called Tiny and it's been compared to a Berkshire Hathaway of tech. Small cap, mind you, so far. Let's keep that in mind as we go through comparing what he says to what Buffett says and the company to Berkshire Hathaway. Now, there are comparisons made quite a lot between Buffett and investors or Berkshire Hathaway, baby Berkshires, so forth. But the founders really have taken Berkshire Hathaway's model to heart and they are value investors. Both Howard Marks and Bill Ackman are investors in this guy's activities. He knows Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger. He's talked to them. He's talked to Munger quite frequently by the sound of it from podcasts that I've listened to. So the comparisons are interesting in this case and it is a small company so it's got a lot of room to grow. If we think of the three-legged stool, Chuck Acra's three-legged stool, a long runway for growth being one of the legs of the stool. So this company definitely has that. So let's dig in and see what Andrew has to say. Let's see if his philosophy really is like Berkshire and Buffett. He's already got quite a lot of experience in owning profitable companies, but we'll see that as we go along. The information here is mostly from the Investors podcast with Trey a few months ago, three months ago, where Andrew talked to him. So let's see what they said and I'll respond to it. So Andrew was first asked by Trey what he thinks of the current market environment. And remember, this was a few months ago. And he said they've been pretty much sitting on their hands for a, a long time. They have long periods of inaction, which again is pretty much like Berkshire and Buffett, where they wait to swing big when the moment is right. So Andrew said that the environment is starting to look better for them. They acquire companies, profitable tech companies, small companies. So again, Constellation Software comes to mind as well as Berkshire here and they're from Canada as well. So they have listed Constellation Software as one of their role models or Mark Lennon from there. They said they're just getting excited about buying companies again after not buying anything for quite a long time sitting on their hands. And that's because there is more distress in the tech sector around at the moment. It's getting more as it filters through. Tech is an area that's had probably the most distressed after riding so high. So stands to reason as value investors that they didn't buy things for a while and now it's looking better to buy. Andrew also said that he thinks that one of the good things about what they do is that they don't have a ticker for every business and again this is just like Berkshire Hathaway or Constellation Software where they own over 30 businesses and they have investments and a lot more but they don't have a ticker for each business so there's not that anxiety about watching the share price in fact when they were private he said it was it was good there because they really didn't think about it that much they were just working day to day thinking about the micro what they need to do for each business and they didn't really think about the overall valuation that much and he said that they have a figure in their head but it's not sort of their day to day again that's quite like Berkshire where Buffett and Munger talk about focusing on the business that they own the subsidiaries they're not kind of focused on the ticket every day they don't care about that it's more about the intrinsic value of the company and growing those companies over time good businesses, wonderful businesses, which is another thing that Andrew says. He talks about one owning wonderful businesses straight from Buffett and Munger. He says the businesses that they're looking for and that they buy have some sort of competitive advantage or a moat and they just like holding those businesses for the long term. Again, just like Berkshire and Buffett would say. Seeing that they're known as a Berkshire Hathaway of tech, Trey asks Andrew what their float is that they use to buy companies because as we all know here, if we follow Berkshire Hathaway, they have this huge float from the insurance company that they use to invest in companies. So what is the float that they have being a tech-based business buying small tech companies? Andrew says that they have always owned profitable tech companies, small profitable tech companies, so they can use the profits from those companies to reinvest and buy other companies. They've always done it that way. He says it's natural for them because they, right from the start, they've bootstrapped companies. He started his own tech company early on. They make a point of owning profitable companies tech companies that have cash flow that they can use to have other acquisitions on tech companies when they find them but only when they find them they said they've been sitting on their hands so they don't buy very often and they wait to find the wonderful companies as he said Buffett's got the saying I'm a better investor because I'm a businessman and I'm a better businessman because I'm an investor and Andrew also takes this to heart he says that bootstrapping in the early days or repeatedly bootstrapping businesses really helped with investing and buying businesses because he can see that other founders, other companies that want to sell to him when they get approached or they approach companies, 
that they can see what they might be doing wrong because they've done it before and they know how to improve those businesses. Sometimes when they buy these tech businesses, the founder wants to move on, they've had enough, they want to cash out. He said, that's fine. And they go about hiring a CEO who's scaled a business before, who knows what they're doing, and they implement the best practices as they've done before many times. So it's kind of rinse and repeat. Although everyone's different, they know the best practices for many different situations, and they can go in there and help that business and help it grow. Andrew tells us a bit about the 20-year entrepreneurial journey that led to Tiny going public a few months ago. The journey involves Howard Marks and Bill Ackman as well. So he tells us a little bit about how they got involved in his companies as investors. By the way, if you're watching on YouTube and getting value out of this episode so far, I really appreciate you hitting that like button to help with visibility, help to spread it to more people. Thanks. He said the story goes back to 2010 when he had his original digital agency, MetaLab, which which was growing and he incubated several SaaS businesses from that. So he's been a serial entrepreneur pretty much from the beginning, having many businesses. He said that's of interest to him, not just have one business, to have many. He's kind of a, a founder, a starter of businesses. And he said that he met someone from Shopify and that started them on a new track as well. He said the meeting led them to start building themes for Shopify. Shopify needed people to build themes and they said that they were the first partner in the themes marketplace and that turned into what he said is a wonderful business. Again, that Buffett terminology. He said that was a wonderful business because being digital, it had high margins and they didn't really have to do much else but bug fixes, updates, maintenance. And in 2014, he got an offer to buy the business. He said elsewhere that when he sold that business, he didn't know much about investing, but he wasn't really enjoying life because he had these multiple businesses that he was running, operating at the time, and it all became too much. He was not enjoying life. And a friend actually suggested that he sell one of the businesses. It was the first time that he had had quite a lot of money. But after he did sell it, he started reading about investing and he picked up a Buffett book and read that and realized that he had made a bit of a mistake by selling that business because it was a wonderful business and he should have just held on to it. And what he should have done was delegate some of the tasks that he was doing, many of the tasks that he was doing. Buffett's got this famous calendar situation where he can sit all day and read if he wants to, even though he's running one of the biggest businesses in the world. So he became fascinated by this, about how Buffett does this, and he decided that it was a mistake that he'd sold it. He should have been more into delegating, but he knew nothing about investing at the time, and that was his road down the investing route to learn more about it and to become as well as an entrepreneur and investor. He had sold the business to a family office and he still actually owned 20% of it. And as time went by, the family office wanted to sell on again and he asked if he could buy it back because he realized the mistake that he'd made and he did, he bought it back. They ended up buying more businesses with that platform. Also, he talks about Howard Marks and Bill Ackman here, how he met them, how he met Bill Ackman. Was he actually paid to go to lunch with Bill? I think it was over $60,000 he paid, and Bill spent a long time with him, and they actually got on really well. He mentioned to Bill how he's an investor in Bill's company, and Bill said at the end of the lunch, because they got on so well and obviously clicked in some way, if you've ever got a deal to do, let's do business together. And that's how Bill Ackman became an investor in his companies and Howard Marks as well. So he got in with these billionaire value investors because they had a similar philosophy and they obviously saw something in him. He said he's done that a lot to try and get into the right room with the right people. He lives in Victoria, Canada, which is well out of the way. Again, that's similar to Buffett living in Omaha. So in the value investing way, he is away from the big cities. But he said he does go to conferences. He makes sure that he goes to conferences and keeps an eye on these famous investors and makes sure to get into a room with them at the right time in the right place. And that's how he met Bill Ackman and he met Charlie Munger and he had a phone call, a long phone call with Warren Buffett at one time as well. He said to talk to him for about an hour and a half, which is amazing. Of course, it struck me too that this is a similar way that Manish Pabri met Warren Buffett and then Charlie Munger the same way. He paid for that charity lunch with Warren Buffett, which was an afternoon, and then he had a relationship with them going forward, especially with Charlie Munger. Buffett introduced him to Charlie Munger. This is the way that Andrew Wilkinson got into the same room having lunch with Bill Ackman. He talked about how Tiny came about, the merger that's happened a few months ago to form the ticket Tiny. He said they had built up a platform of businesses and they took that public in 2021 that's e-commerce and in the meantime they'd built up other investments other acquisitions outside of that 
and they thought it was a good chance now this year to merge them together so they could make investments across the platform and I assume to access capital in the capital markets. So they took that public to form Tiny. They could see that it could work as one group, one full company where they had a lot of investments, a lot of acquisitions, there's over 30 and tens of investments apart from that. So we'll all work together in a Berkshire type format where they can have subsidiaries, they can make investments, they can even invest in public companies, they can do a lot of things just like Berkshire does. They have a more Berkshire-like model than they do Constellation Software. Another thing that was observed that it's like Berkshire Hathaway is Buffett's famous for doing these quick deals, being ready to make even billion dollar deals and when companies get into distress and people want to sell and he, he knows that he wants to buy the company, he simplifies things and does the deal very quickly. Even he knows within a phone call, within a few hours, he can make an offer to buy because he's ready to do that. It's simple. And Andrew Wilkinson says the same thing. They're known for doing easy deals. So founders want to sell to them and they might want out quickly. But he said there's no rules on that. It could take six months. It depends on the founder. It doesn't depend on them. They don't force quick deals, but they can do quick deals, very quick deals if they want to, to get businesses that they know are wonderful businesses and the founder wants to sell. As I mentioned briefly before, another thing that he's got from Buffett is this extreme delegation where Buffett can run this huge business and seemingly can read all day. How does he do that? Andrew says that he still has trouble with that, but he's found that delegation has been worked wonders for him over the years, learning to do that. So, you know, Buffett doesn't even do email. He gets an assistant to do it. And Andrew said that he's learned to delegate as much as possible and leave the companies that they own to autonomously run by themselves. He said over time, though, he said less and less fires to put out, less and less busy, less and less anxiety. And he always is trying to find ways of delegating more He's sort of become obsessive about delegating as much as possible. He doesn't want to know a problem unless it's really serious and he'll leave a CEO or other people, other management to deal with it. And so he's able to free up his time to think about investing, think more high level about the businesses that they're buying and just these st strategic decisions rather than the day-to-day -day operations of running all these companies. And that's how Buffett can own all of these businesses and Munger as well without having too much pressure on them for their time every day. Another thing he did, which he's become well known for, is anti-goals. In fact, he wrote a Medium post about it, which is still online if you want to find that. But he said that what they worked out to do, he and his partner Chris, was thinking about what they didn't want to do, wrote a list of things that they didn't want to do, and then reverse engineered it from there and delegated those things away. So the things that gave them pain in the day, stress, they delegated them away. So it's going to be fascinating to see how this company goes in the future, where it goes from here. It's under a billion dollar valuation. Can it be one of those ones that goes 10x or more over time? And the Berkshire model can scale. And we've seen Constellation Software can scale to tens of billions. So it will be fascinating, as I said, to see what happens over time. And Andrew Wilkinson and his partner are pretty young, so they've got decades to go if they wanted to stay doing it and be involved. They've got decades to compound. So I'm going to follow along with this company over time to see what happens. If there's interest in it, I'll make more videos about it. So I'd really like to know your thoughts about Tiny. Have you looked into this company? What do you think of Andrew Wilkinson's approach to being the Berkshire of tech over time? It's still small. It's a, a small cap company. Can it get big over time? Have they got the right approach? What do you think? Do you think it'll work in tech the way that they're doing it? Let me know in the comments. I'm going to put a video here on YouTube of what YouTube thinks that you should watch next. So go and see that. Thanks for watching or listening and I'll see you in the next one.